Now, the first thing I want to say is that it's absolutely mind-blowing to be standing under a vehicle on a hoist and have absolutely nothing for the floor structure. Um, at Monroe & Associates, we've seen the evolution of the automotive industry for the past 30 to 40 years. Myself, with 17 years at Monroe & Associates, I've come from a background of benchmarking vehicles where you'd have hundreds of stamp parts for the for the where this front mega giga casting is, hundreds and hundreds of parts in the back. And the level of refinement and integration is incredible. And before we get into where the battery interface is, Tesla is not wasting any opportunity to integrate the casting for multiple mounting features. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Julius B. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. So Monroe has dropped the structural pack out of the brand new Model Y from Austin and the seats are indeed mounted to the pack, which enabled it to be dropped right out of the car. There were only 38 bolts holding this pack to the car body itself. Now, listen to this. Tesla structural pack with the seats and the carpet and the center console only weighs 1,198 pounds. Corey said that the Rivian battery pack alone, just the batteries weighs nearly twice as much. So this really is innovation at its finest. And Corey also said that Tesla has already made improvements to the heat pump in this new iteration of the Model Y. Now, yes, the Rivian is a much bigger and heavier vehicle with a much larger battery pack when compared to the Model Y. However, I thought it was a cool bit of information just for context, if nothing else. And I'm sure you've all seen Tesla's production and delivery figures by now, but I just have to say, Troy, we love you, man, but you've effectively taken out all of the excitement for these quarterly releases by Tesla because your predictions are so close. And now many people are taking Tesla's record production for June and extrapolating that over the next 12 months, which was compiled by Troy. However, there are a few things we have to keep in mind. Let's not forget the entire Shanghai factory was shut down through July 4th, and now the Model Y line should be down for around 10 days starting today. After that, the Model 3 line is due for upgrades as well, and could be shut down for around 20 days starting July 18th. Moving to Berlin, Electrek reported a two week shutdown starting July 11th, coming from local German sources, and this is once again for upgrades. We know this factory is eventually going to produce 4680 cells, but it could be a bit early for that, and the nature of the upgrades are currently unknown, outside of the goal being to shorten the time of each vehicle produced from around 90 seconds down to 45. There's also chatter of a third line at Giga Berlin, but this may not go into effect until closer to September. Remember, to start a third shift, Tesla needs more employees, and there have been reports of challenges with hiring, which could be why Tesla is set to increase pay by 6% at the Berlin factory. The point here, let's be careful with what we extrapolate because we're losing a few weeks of production, and the production rates should be materially different after these upgrades. All eyes now shift to July 20th for Tesla's Q2 financials, but real long-term investor eyes should already be on Q3 and Q4 and into 2023. And remember, when it comes to Tesla's Q2 financials, expectations are all over the map. Here we have Goldman Sachs lowering their Q2 EPS estimate to 68 cents, down from $1.24. Some others are as high as $2 per share, most in line around $1.75. But just know there's a wide range of expectations going into this financial call. This image was shared showing the roof at Giga Austin. As you can see, the Tesla logo is going to be the white space and it will be surrounded by solar panels. So they almost have the outline of the logo done, but they have the rest of the roof to go. And eventually once it's complete, this is what it should look like. Tesla is now using its cameras to provide better data for pre-tensioning of the seatbelt before a crash. Until now, your seatbelts would automatically tighten using pre-tensioners, but only when the airbags were deployed. Tesla describes the seatbelt system enhancement, saying your seatbelts will now begin to tighten and protect properly restrained occupants earlier in a wide array of frontal crashes. Now, sure, it's true that some other cars can do a version of this with radar technology. However, Tesla's cameras should over time have better data and more data, and you know what that means. Also from a new software update, Tesla is going to be reducing the impact of potholes using the data it's gathering from its cameras. Now, this title isn't really accurate because it's saying to help avoid potholes, but that's not really what's going on. 
With this new software update, Tesla has a new feature for its adaptive suspension system. Tesla adaptive suspension will now adjust ride height for an upcoming rough road section. This adjustment may occur at various locations, subject to availability as the vehicle downloads rough road map data generated by Tesla vehicles. And honestly, one of the first things that comes to mind for me is let's get this data to the local municipalities that need to know where they need to fix the streets and where are the biggest issues. And yes, this does mean this feature will only be available for the Model S and X because they have the adaptive suspension system. However, of course, longer term, the goal will be not just to hit the potholes with a better suspension, but to avoid them altogether, which could be then implemented on the 3 and Y as Tesla begins to gather this data and hopefully integrate it into the FSD beta software stack. Remember this, back in early 2020, there was a tweet asking, is it possible Tesla will be able to create a micro map of every road with all the details, stop signs, potholes that can be used by other Teslas when they drive along the same road? To which Elon responded, yes. And just so you know, almost 10 years ago, there was a Mercedes-Benz S-Class that was released with a feature road surface scan, which let the S-Class detect and prime itself for upcoming bumps and surface imperfections. The system's windscreen mounted camera would look 15 meters ahead, then relay relevant data to the Magic Body Control, an active hydraulic suspension system. Sounds pretty familiar, so Tesla isn't the first one to do something like this. However, it will most likely eventually have one of the best iterations of it with better technology, of course, because it's 10 years later. Here we have the top 15 best-selling cars, not just electric vehicles, the entire auto market in Switzerland through June year to date, being led by the Model 3 and the Model Y, third place the Skoda Octavia, followed by the Audi Q3. And remember, the Model S and X have not been exported outside of the United States for some time now, maybe close to two years. Hopefully they can get back to doing that sometime toward the end of this year. Now, here's an article from Drive Tesla Canada that I'll just tell you, it's going to generate more questions than answers. This is apparently a solar powered range extender built by Yes Tesla that was shown off at a recent technology fair. And it does indeed come with a Starlink as you can see up top. So that kind of gives you a scale of how big this thing really is. This product was shown at the Ideas Expo in Hanover, Germany this week. Now, according to Falk Melzer, who originally shared this information, this has no battery stationary storage. It has nine 300 watt solar panels and when fully deployed it can generate up to 2.7 kilowatts or one third that amount when the side panels are folded in. So I definitely think it's cool that Tesla is working on products like this that we really have no idea about. However, in the real world, this isn't going to do you too many favors because if you have to tow this, it's going to reduce your range by some degree. And this really isn't that powerful of a system. Sure, there may be certain use cases where it makes sense, but there's no discussion of how much it would cost. And this is not something that Tesla plans to sell anytime soon, as far as I can tell. In case you see this article, just know that BYD sells about half full BEVs and about half hybrids. So if you subtract the hybrids, yes, Tesla is still the global full BEV leader. BYD sold 314,000 plug-in hybrids in the first half of 2022 and 323,000 full BEVs compared to Tesla, which is all full BEV at 564,000 for the first half of this year. And probably more importantly, BYD's margins are razor thin and BYD did not have to shut down during quarter two like Tesla did because its factory was located outside of Shanghai. From Reuters, Germany's road traffic agency was recalling some Model 3 and Ys because of a fault in the automatic emergency call system that affects around 59,000 vehicles globally. Apparently this was a breakdown of the e-call system which is designed to automatically contact emergency responders in the event of a serious accident. No other detail was given as of now. In case you happened to see this video, which was trending on Twitter over the weekend, just remember this was actually from a few years ago. It's just that individual shared it again as a way to try to persuade people away from EVs. But remember, Tesla has added more supercharger locations in that area since that time. So yes, there are definitely still busy supercharger locations even today, but to take a video from a few years ago and repost it as if it's happening today is just completely disingenuous. And this user was talking about that video and said this, which I hadn't heard before, but I 
I thought it was kind of funny. Tesla owner Silicon Valley shared a pretty cool video climbing the highest mountain in Austria with 60 Teslas from eight different countries supporting peace, love, and Tesla, all things I can get on board with. A very welcome update here in 22.20, the return of the arrival state of charge in the overview. Taking a look around the rest of the industry in quarter two, GM sold a total of 7,217 plug-in EVs for the quarter, down 36% from one year ago and about 1.2% of the overall GM volume. That 7,000 figure for the quarter made up of 6,945 Bolts and 272 Hummer EVs. And some good news for GM, their Altium cells should begin production in Ohio to support expanded EV manufacturing starting in August this year. Overall, GM sales in quarter two were down 15.4% to 582,000. Toyota down 22.9% to 531,000. And Stellantis down 16% to 408,000 all in quarter two of this year. However, Ford doing well with sales up 31.5% compared with an industry decline of 11% and Ford branded EVs jumped 77%, making Ford the second best selling brand of EVs behind Tesla for the month of June and the first half of this year. In the month of June, Ford sold 1,837 F-150 Lightnings with a cumulative sales figure of 2,296 so far. And Toyota Motor North America for the first half of 2022, they reported sales of 1.045 million vehicles, down 19% on a volume basis. And for the first half of this year, sales of EVs for Toyota, which remember are mostly hybrid, represented 25.5% of total sales. However, if you come to the table and you look at Toyota's BZ4X, it's one true full BEV, and look at the column for current sales year to date, 232. Asked about the FSD beta 10.13, Elon said the 3 a.m. oil is being burned to get this out. The Atlanta Fed came out with its latest Q2 real GDP prediction, currently sitting at negative 2.1%. So if it's anywhere in the negative, remember that would technically put us into a recession because quarter one was also negative. That'll do it for today. Of course, the Monroe video will be linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.